So the question of the day is, should you buy 2016 to 2021 Toyota Tacoma? This truck is very popular among enthusiasts. It actually has a very large enthusiast base behind it. My name is AMD. I am a Toyota Master Diagnostic Technician with over a decade of experience and I've worked on these trucks from the first day that they came off the truck from the factory, brand new, till today. And throughout its life of this generation, I've seen some common problems and trends that I'd like to share with you in this video. Whether you own one or you're planning to buy one, I think these are some things that you need to know about before or during your ownership. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's go check this thing out. A small overview before we get started. The Tacoma has always been a dear truck to everybody. Everybody loves this truck. It's just the right size, it's very reliable, and this continues on in this generation. However, there are a few uh, bumps uh, across the road here when this thing came out. 2016 was probably the roughest year, and this truck did not have a very smooth launch, if you would. There was a slew of problems from production, and uh, things were a little bumpy compared to the previous generation, which was rock solid. However, these bumps were fixed, things were gotten much better, and as we progressed, things got a lot better, and now it is just as reliable as the previous generation. One thing about these trucks that was a big deal when it came out was the GoPro mount, because everybody loves GoPro and they need one in their Tacoma. However, that GoPro mount, by the way, is gone in 2019 model, but uh, that was one of the very big highlights of this truck. Otherwise, it's really similar to the previous generation. These trucks generally are very good trucks, very reliable, very low key. You just own them, maintain them, and they last forever. However, be very careful with this one because if you buy one used from a neglective owner, these can be problematic. And if you buy one from an owner that's not picky about their little issues that are annoying, you could end up buying one that has all the issues we talked about in this video. Most of them are not serious enough to cause breakdowns or issues, but they could be very annoying. So having said that, let's start with the first category. So let's start with the engine category. The Tacoma came with two possible engines, the 3.5 liter V6, which is this one, and the four cylinder 2.7 liter engine. Let's start talking about the 3.5 liter common problems. So this engine is very similar to the one in the Camry, Highlander, Sienna, and the other V6 models with the D4S, direct injection, and port injection at the same time. So rumors about this engine having carbon buildup are not true because it has both systems at the same time. So you're not gonna have carbon buildup with these engines. However, they did have a few uh, common trends to them. Let's start with some common oil leaks on these. The first very common and very large oil leak, which mainly seems to affect 2016 and 17, is the front timing cover. Very big job, very easy to check. However, if you own one of these, you might wanna get it checked before your warranty runs out. This is covered under powertrain warranty. Again, very big job, very easy to check, but they're very common on these models and we've seen a lot of them leak from that area. Another common oil leak that is not as common as the front timing cover is some oil leaks on the side of the engine from the vacuum pump. Other than these two oil leaks, we have some coolant leaks on this engine. Unfortunately with this engine, Toyota switched a lot of the coolant hoses or coolant elbows and various bypass hoses into plastic from aluminum. That's just the way it is with new manufacturing, trying to reduce costs. However, that did not result in a very happy mixture. Plastic gets brittle, it cracks, it breaks, and that's just the way it is. One thing that was notorious on these trucks, again, 2016 and 17, I haven't really seen any of the 18 and up have this issue, but there is a coolant bypass pipe in the back of the engine. It is plastic and it is notorious to crack and leak at a very young age. And I hope they updated the part because the replacement for this guy is very expensive, very intensive. And actually, initially we started pulling the bodies off to change them because it's much easier than that. Just like you see in this picture. 
It's a massive job and you'll typically see a trail of coolant on top of the transmission on the side of the of the tr passenger side of the transmission. You'll see just a uh, strange trail of coolant and co coolant will drop down. This was somewhat common so if you're buying 16, 17, even more than that, make sure you look on the passenger side of the transmission and look up and you should no see no coolant leaking from that area. Now. Many people will complain about this engine that is very loud and sometimes it's loud, sometimes it's not. Folks, every time this engine runs on direct injection only mode, it'll be very loud. The injectors are loud, the fuel pump is very loud, and that's just the way it's designed. It is not really a problem. However, there is a known problem with the fuel pump, especially in the early ones, where it makes a chirping noise that is so loud, you'll know there is a problem, not the normal loud. Now the fuel pump, just get, needs to be replaced with an updated unit and life is good after that. But this really affected only 16, again, some 17s, but mostly these two years. After that, things seem to have been fine with the updated part and everything is good. Now, there was a common theme with these with uh, software updates. There was a lot of software updates to improve a lot of issues. Now, one of them for the engine is a stumble on acceleration. A lot of people have complained about this and it's actually a known issue and there is a software update to solve this. Any issue you have with drivability, always ask for software updates because there was a lot of software updates on this engine to fix various little things. And the latest issue that finally got resolved was a chronic drive belt noise. It just starts chirping and making noise and squealing and squeaking and all kinds of problems and people are complaining. You replace the belt, same thing over and over and over. Well, Toyota finally figured out the problem and they updated the belt. So if you have this problem or you hear it in one that you're buying, negotiate the price, but make sure you don't buy an aftermarket belt, you buy an updated belt. And I will leave the part number for that updated belt here. This is the most updated part number as of the filming of this video. You should always buy the most updated part number for any part you replace on your Toyota. Let's talk about the uh, four-cylinder engine. And honestly, I don't know much about the four-cylinder engine because it is that good. It's very underpowered compared to the V6, of course, but it is so reliable. And I believe this might be the very last engine Toyota makes that is a cast iron block. It's a very tough little bird. They really don't have many problems. There are small things that have been carried over and they're kind of common on these engines, but they're, none of them are big deals. You'll have your valve cover leaks. We're talking, this engine needs to have 100,000 miles or more for you to see these valve covers. Very easy, lots of space to work on this engine, very DIY. Another common issue with them is the water pump leaking, again, very easy, plenty of space to replace it, nothing I'm concerned about. Very low time on this one labor-wise to replace it, not a big deal. Other than that, the 2.7 liter engine is really bulletproof and they really very low maintenance, they don't really have many, many more issues. Let's talk about some transmission issues with these trucks. Now these trucks could have an automatic or a manual transmission and we're going to cover both. We're also going to talk in this segment about the drivetrain, like the four-wheel drive system, differentials, transfer case and everything else. Starting with the transmission, let's start with the automatic transmission. The automatic transmission is relatively bulletproof on these trucks actually. However, there are a few things that you need to know about. Again, specifically to the 1617. However, there's one issue that extends all the way to 19. There is a common concern with surging. This transmission will start surging up and down. Just to let you know that there is a software update that resolves that. It's not a problem with the transmission itself. Another issue is the general way the transmission shifts and this one actually only applies to the early ones, 16s. It's just a general feel of how the transmission shifts. It doesn't shift smooth, it doesn't shift on time and it feels like it's all over the place a little bit. There was a software update to fix that. It's relatively simple, even if you're out of warranty, it's not a big cost to fix that. There's one issue with the automatic transmission that is trending at the moment that could be a serious one. So far, there has been no official report that the the truck has this problem and it's actually believed to be incorrect transmission fluid or contamination when the fluid is replaced. The trending issue currently is torque converter shutter. We've seen a few. It's not common enough where I'll tell you it's a very common problem. However, we are seeing them more and more and I want you to know about this issue. Make sure you're using the right fluid if you replace it and make sure you're maintaining this transmission at the right interval. 
If you have this issue, it's gonna happen only when you accelerate with light acceleration around 40, 50 miles an hour, you feel the whole truck start shaking. As soon as you accelerate a little bit more, the shake will go away and life is good. This seems to affect so far 16 to 17 models. I have not seen a 19 and up, but as I told you, this problem is trending and we will find out more as time goes. By the way, if you own one of these trucks, they might tell you it's a lifetime fluid, but What's a lifetime? I highly recommend you replace the transmission fluid on these trucks every 60,000 miles or six years, whichever comes first, using only Toyota WS fluid. Don't use aftermarket, but I'll leave that one up to you. Let's talk about the manual transmission in these trucks. The manual transmission in this truck is actually an awesome option. They are very reliable. However, they only have one annoying issue, and it's not really an issue, it's more of an annoyance. The clutch pedal squeaks. Now this is actually a carryover problem from the previous generation where they just squeak. You press the clutch, squeak, you let it go, squeak. Toyota has made a slew of updates and the latest one is basically to replace everything to do with the clutch except the clutch itself and the fork. So you're going to replace your master slave and the, and the hose just to resolve this issue. And honestly, this is more of an annoyance. There are many DIY fixes for it. You put grease on the fork, you put grease here and there, and that's gonna be one that's kinda chronic and it's annoying, but it's, I just want you to know this is not an actual issue where there's something broken. This is just two metal surfaces making contact and they make that noise. Let's talk about the four-wheel drive system in this truck. Now this truck, of course, is a serious off-roader. It is very capable in four-wheel drive in low range, it has a proper transfer case, and it is a proper off-roader. However, there are a few issues, and again, going back to that uh, 16 and 17 year, most of them are actually affected that model. Let's start with the first one that is actually started from the beginning of, of this truck's life and kind of still going. Vibrations. All kinds of vibrations when you coast at low speed. This truck is notorious for their vibration concerns. There is a procedure by Toyota to install some dampener in the steering to take care of some of that, some of that vibration. Also to check the drive line alignment. This procedure is a little bit involved and you have to make adjustments to the drive line if needed. But if you have vibrations, be patient. This truck is known for some vibration. So if you want that ultra smooth ride, Perhaps this is not the truck for you. Just remember, this is a body on frame truck. It's not exactly a Highlander. Continuing on the theme of vibration and noise, there is a problem with these trucks from noise from the front differential. It only happens when you're in two wheel drive. When you put it in four wheel drive, the noise goes away. There's actually an updated front differential to take care of this issue. Again, it affected the early two years. 16 and 17, and I haven't really seen it in other years other than these two. One thing about the four-wheel drive system that you need to be aware of on these trucks. If you live in an area where you will rarely use your four-wheel drive, or let's say you used it in the winter and now in the summer you don't use it, make sure every month you engage four-wheel drive, you engage low range, you let everything move, because if you leave these things without engaging them for a long time, they're actually going to seize and then they're not gonna work the next time you need them. So you need to constantly, every month or so, engage them, disengage them, make everything move, because actually even in your owner's manual as a recommendation, because when these things seize, there's an actuator in the front, there's an act in the front differential, there's an actuator in the transfer case that are notorious to seize, and the one in the transfer case is kind of a pain to replace because the whole transfer case have to come apart. And yes, there are ways around it to replace it without, but they're not recommended because you could easily damage the new expensive part. Folks, this truck, when it comes to drivetrain and four-wheel drive and all that, they're noisy, they cause vibrations, they're not the smoothest in the world. However, other, other than these annoyances, they're relatively bulletproof. They're really good systems and with proper maintenance, they should last a very long time. But just know if you're that picky driver that doesn't like noise and occasional vibration in here and there, this is gonna annoy you. There are a few fixes here and there as we discussed in this video, but overall, it is not a 100% smooth drivetrain. Just thought I'd let you know that. Moving on to the body category, and there's one common problem with these, which is typically not noticed or thought about. So some paint bubbling or actually rust starting to form prematurely on the door sills. 
There is a very important thing that you need to be aware of is that there is a specific repair procedure for these to prevent them from happening again. If you ever notice rust bubbling or paint bubbling, peeling around the door sills, there is a specific procedure. So if you take it to your body shop and they're covering it under warranty, make sure the body shop is aware of that specific procedure to fix this problem. Another common one, and this one also affected the early years, like 16, 17, some 18s. The third brake light leaking water. And you're just gonna notice in heavy rain or through a car wash, you're gonna notice water coming down on the back window, just a trail of water coming down. The third brake light was updated, the seal around it just leaked. They're kind of hard to replace because the headliner has to come down a little bit, but this is a very common problem. And actually, I would test your car if you have one of those because this is a simple enough problem. You just replace a little light with an updated one, but if you leave it or the, if the person you're buying the car from, the previous owner, never bothered to care, this could actually turn into a big issue with water intrusion inside the truck. So you're gonna wanna check that. Just hose the third brake light down if you see water coming in, get the updated one. Make sure you get an updated third brake light though, because unfortunately, laying around will be the original one that has the same problem. So make sure you get the updated part. Last but not least on body is the front bumper. It has a little trim piece that is notorious to come apart and just leave a giant ugly gap. Folks, this one is more of an annoyance than anything else and it's not shoddy build quality or whatever. It's just the cover on these. If you tap it or if, if you get in a minor accident, these things break and they need the whole thing replaced. So if you have that, bring it to your dealership's attention and they'll cover it under warranty. Moving on to the chassis category. So there's a constant whistling noise that you'll hear driving this truck, especially in windy days and windy conditions. It's actually from the lower control arms. There's not a problem with the lower control arms. There's just the holes in the control arm from the factory. They seem to sometimes cause a whistle that is really annoying. There is an official fix for this. There's basically a plug kit that just goes in there and plugs these holes so it wouldn't make noise. That will let you know. Another one that is uh, more of an annoyance than an actual problem. Let's talk about brakes. So the brakes in this truck, they have front disc brakes and the ancient rear drums. They work great. There's no really big issues with them. However, I want to bring your attention to the front brakes. The front brakes are uh, good, but if you live in the rust belt, they're gonna give you issues. They're notorious to seize up and for the calipers to seize up. So if you live in the rust belt, you're gonna wanna service those brakes maybe every year, every two, just take the pins, clean them. That will actually prevent these brakes from having issues in the future. Otherwise, they don't really last very long because again, this is a heavy truck and they uh, get most of the use in the front because of the rear drums. However, one tip for you if you own one, Always adjust the rear brakes. Now I know the rear brakes will self adjust and automatically adjust, but they never seem to work very well. So if every 10,000, 20,000 miles, you pop the drums off, clean everything and adjust them, you'll actually prolong the life of the front brakes and you won't have issues. Speaking of the rear brakes, on 2016 models, there was a notorious issue where you press the brake and there's all kinds of noise in the back. Now this issue was really a manufacturing issue and I doubt there's trucks out there in the road that had this issue that haven't gotten it taken care of because it was something massive. You just press the brakes and the things start rattling and make all kinds of weird noise. We're talking about new trucks. So the axle, the hub on the axle was actually not the correct size for the drum. So the drum would just move around and make all kinds of noise. However, if you're buying a truck from an owner that never really bother to listen to it or didn't bother them at all, you might want to get this one taken care of because this one can get a little expensive if you're out of warranty. Let's talk about the electrical category. Now this truck generally doesn't really have many electrical problems. However, again, we go back to the 16 and 17 models and you'll see when we get to the best years to buy what my recommendation will be. You're already guessing what that would be. The blind spot monitor had some issues where the sensors would have issues, all kinds of electrical grumblings with the blind spot monitor. One warning about that is when you go to buy one, make sure it is turned on because all these problems could be there and it's hidden by simply turning off the blind spot. So if you're going to buy one, make sure you turn it on, make sure it works right, 
during all your whole test drive of the truck that it worked properly. Things can get a little expensive if these systems that had the kind of born with these problems that were never addressed, but otherwise most people got them fixed and after that really when you get updated parts and everything's good, you shouldn't have issues. Another electrical problem with these trucks, which is more of a mess up from Toyota. Sorry, I love Toyota, but when they mess up, they mess up and it is what it is. The air conditioning works terribly in these trucks over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason for that is Toyota decided not to install a secondary fan to help that condenser cool down. They only have the big mechanical fan and that's about it. And in 100 degree weather, stop and go traffic, that's not sufficient. So the AC just flat stops working because of over temperature and too much pressure because the thing is not getting cooled properly. So Toyota has developed a kit where you can buy it, install the fan and you won't have this problem. This really will only affect folks that live in really hot climate. So if you notice that your Tacoma air conditioning is not really that great, get the kit, install the fan. And this was actually covered by warranty. So this will affect all of them. And if you notice that your AC doesn't work, I want you to go in there and get it installed because I think they should have done this from the factory, but they didn't for whatever reason, but at least they developed a kit where it's simple and easy. And of course, what's a modern Toyota video without talking about electrical problems, without talking about the horrendous radios? Folks, Toyota makes a great car, great trucks, great everything, except radios. They're just horrible. Constant updates, problems with Bluetooth, problems with this, problems with that. It's just the way it is. Just know when you have problems with the radio, there are updates available. They come out every so, so and then to address problems, but you always want to get it to the latest version so the problems will be resolved. And last but not least in the electrical category, and this is more of a, so just so you know, more or less of an issue actually. So these trucks in the later years, 19 and up, they have safety systems, pre-collision, adaptive cruise control, and all this when equipped. Just be aware when you lift these trucks, and many people will modify these trucks for even more off-roading capability. When you lift these trucks, these safety systems will no longer work right. And from the dealership standpoint, there is no way to calibrate these systems to work with your lift. So if you're going extreme lifting, just know that these systems might just flat not work and there's no fix for them anymore. Just thought I'd let you know that before you go lifting your truck. Let's have the uh, frame conversation, as I'd like to call it. The frame in this truck, while it's good, and Toyota did say it was completely redesigned from the previous generation, which had rust problems and all that. However, from what we are looking at, they're exactly the same frame, they just have a little brace, yay big, inside the frame. And everything else is, uh, looks uh, exactly the same. And so is the rust problems. So, folks, if you live in the, in the rust belt, this frame will rust very quickly, and that's just the way they are. Unfortunately, that's the only Achilles heel in these trucks, and not only the Tacoma, the Tundra as well. If you live in the rust belt, you're gonna want to rust proof the frame, not the body of the truck, the frame. It is very important. You should consider that as part of purchasing the truck. That's just the norm. Road salt is the normal thing for rust belt trucks. I live in Chicago where it is the rust belt and that's the norm with rust. However, 2016 and 17, they actually did have a campaign to spray the inside of the frame if it was not sprayed from the factory. And the coolest thing about this frame is after 18 and up, they were already sprayed inside the frame. So there was still the campaign on them, but we just put some plugs to limit the amount of salt that goes inside the frame. But they were co coated with a wax on the inside that doesn't evaporate, doesn't come down, doesn't, doesn't go anywhere. It just stays there and really protects the frame. Because these frames always rot from the inside out, not from the outside in. So by this update, I think these frames will be a lot better. However, I would still coat them on the outside because they are not coated. They're just painted and that's it. So that's the one thing you need to, need to know about with these trucks. The frames will rust if you don't take care of them, if you don't wash them regularly, and most importantly, coat them 
And more importantly than that, re-coat them. Don't just coat them once and forget it. Every few years, you're going to need to reapply that coating to make sure you have continuous protection. So what's the uh, best year Tacoma to buy? This one is very simple, and I'm guessing if you watch this video this long, you already know the answer to that one. All of them except 16s and some 17s. Now, somebody will jump on the comments right now who owns a 16 and 17 will say, I don't know what I'm talking about. You have a 16 and 17, it has been bulletproof, you have zero issues, and I am so happy that that is the case. But you own one truck, I see hundreds, if not thousands of these trucks, and the 16 and 17s have been the most problematic. If you're buying one, folks, 18 and up, especially 19 plus, they really are good. All these issues that we talked about in this video, or at least most of them have been resolved, and you will not have issues. Having said that, if you're buying one of these trucks, remember, this is a body-on-frame truck. It is not smooth. It is not silky smooth, where you're going to be just be driving and not feel anything. They're rough. They're bouncy. They're, they vibrate here and there. That's just the way they are. Because in the end, this brand new truck that looks all filled with technology and all that is still an ancient truck. Really not a lot has changed structurally from the previous generation. And that's what makes these trucks desirable and good because they didn't ditch the frame and go with, a, with just a unibody or went with some modern frame that has all these features and now it just doesn't feel like a truck. This is a real truck that drives like a truck, feels like a truck, and it will never drive smooth like a Highlander. So perhaps you should consider that when looking to buy one of these trucks. folks. These are overall very good trucks. Of course, not my word, look at the sales figures. They're very desirable. There's a TRD Pro, which is an icon of these trucks, and it's a very nice truck. However, they have their quirks, they have their issues, just like anything else. Nothing is perfect. It's a machine made by imperfect humans, and that's okay. However, with this video, when you go shop for one, you know that you'd wanna avoid perhaps the 16 and 17, go with the later ones, but if you're buying a 16 and 17, really pay attention to these issues because they are that common on these years. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something new. I hope if you own one of these trucks that it is the last truck you buy and the next one will be also a Tacoma. I hope you don't have these issues, but if you do, it's, it's the way it is with these trucks. There are all these issues have, have resolutions and you can take care of them and life is good. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.